Welcome to Start Your Divorce Thursdays. I am Claudia with Pivotal Peace. I'm your go-to mediator for navigating divorce while parenting children with special needs. I'm also a legal document assistant, LDA, based in the greater Los Angeles area. So let's talk today about some essential forms for what you need to start your divorce process. Okay. Do not be overwhelmed. People get overwhelmed in step two, but I see sometimes people trip themselves up in step one. They get they get so worried. Don't get worried. Don't get worried. So depending on whether you have kids or not and what county you're in, you're going to have two, three, or four initial divorce forms. So the very first thing you need that are non-negotiable, the first two forms that everyone needs in the state of California is a petition and a summons. A petition, you're filling in your important information the date of marriage. You know people get this wrong a lot. Okay, I should sometimes I'm like, you don't know when you were married? That means you don't know your anniversary. Come on now. You should know. <laughs> I'm being mean. You should know your date of marriage. You put your date of marriage, you want to put your date of separation. People are not sure. Usually date of separation is when you decided that this 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 relationship was over. Like there's there's no fixing this. Maybe you someone moved out. Maybe uh you told your spouse, hey, I want a divorce, and for a couple months you've been mulling it over. Or maybe, which is not the best situation, you haven't told your spouse yet, and so you're just going to serve them with divorce papers. Don't do that. Don't do that. But maybe, you know, you just had a conversation about it last night, and so you, you guys decided, yeah, this is right. We're going to move ahead. So sometimes your date of separation is the date you're filling out that form. That's okay. But you guys need to agree on that date because sometimes people argue about that date. And, and if there's a disagreement about that date and you do mediation, Usually that's something we talk about in mediation of what should the date of separation actually be. So we can have a conversation about that. That's not a legal decision. It's just uh, helping you guys reach an agreement together on what it should be, not the mediator telling you what it should be. So you're going to put your date of marriage, your date of separation. If you happen to be in a domestic partnership or you're in a domestic partnership and a marriage, you need to put both of those they're both going to be dissolved and you need to put your your date of marriage and the start of your partnership on both of those forms it's going to ask you if you have any kids you're going to list the names of your kids and their birthdays please spell your names the names of your children correctly i saw it incorrectly once and ooh, that mom was so mad i didn't make that mistake she was mad at him I didn't make that mistake. Okay. They're okay now. They're okay now. Um, so <laughs> spell your kids' names correctly. Know when they were born. Know their birthday. This is so great when you're working together with your spouse, though, because some people are not detail-oriented like that. Some people just, they don't know. This is when your spouse can, maybe they fill out the petition instead of you. Okay. Uh, the petition's also going to ask you about uh, property. Well, it's going to ask you about kids. Let's go back to kids. It's going to ask you what type of custody is it going to be? Joint, legal, or, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> joint uh, or sole, you know? Is this going to be just the petitioner, the person who fills out the forms, they're going to get the kids? Or is it going to be the respondent? Or is it going to be joint? These are just check boxes. Most people pick joint. Not everyone picks that. That's up to you. Um, and then it's going to get to property. It's going to ask you about separate property and community property. Sometimes people want to list everything out. And usually, unless you're going for a true default, which is not the type of cases I work with. I work with couples who are amicable and they're working together. So the purpose of getting this petition done is to get it filed in the court and get your spouse served so that that six-month clock can start. Then later on, you can figure out everything you owe and own. So usually the wording for community property and separate property, if you have either one of those, is pretty general and vague. Some sort of vague statement that just says like, yeah, we have this. Um, we'll figure, well, you know, we'll provide you with more details later. That's not the right language. But 
you're filling these forms out yourself or you're directing us to fill out your forms and you tell us what you want us to put there. Uh, but usually it's some sort of general vague language that is encompassing and then you can provide more detail later on in your divorce when you complete your disclosures and then we complete your settlement agreement, your, your I'm sorry, your divorce settlement agreement, your step three of your divorce, your, your judgment package, whatever you're gonna submit to the court, that's when you wanna provide a lot of detail and be like, this is my life, especially in LA. They wanna know the last four digits of your account numbers. They wanna know your license plate number. That's when you can provide all that detail. Then you're gonna have, um, you're gonna sign and date that. You're gonna have the summons. Oh wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's going to be a box and it's gonna ask you, do you want your former name restored? So maybe you've changed your name when you got married and you have kids and you don't want to change you're like I, but I don't I don't want to I think that people look janky if they have different names than their kids. I'm I, I don't think that maybe you maybe that's what you're thinking. I think it looks janky. So I'm going to keep my 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 kids last name. That's cool, but you know you when your kids grow up you might change your mind. So even if you don't change your name right away, you can still request it in the divorce. You can request that your name, your former name be restored. This is not a, ooh, I get to pick up a new name. I get to be called Obi-Wan Kenobi. No, you can't unless that's your birth name, right? So don't be, don't be naming yourself Mary Poppins unless you were born that way. This is a restoration of a former name, period. If you want a completely different name, that's not handled through this process, but you can mark that and then it'll come up again in the final divorce paperwork. You're gonna sign and date that, that's your petition. Then your summons, you're gonna put your spouse's name, your name, your address, the court address, that gets sent into the court. This summons, what's important about it, especially on the back, one of the important things, is it has automatic temporary restraining orders or ATROs. These are things you can do once the divorce is started. You can't be like, you know what, I'm divorcing you and you just clicked off your cell phone, cut them out of the health insurance, turned off the car insurance. You can't do that. You can't do that. I had a mediation where someone had done that and the, the spouse was like, woo woo, you just violated Atros. And that other spouse had to go back to her employer and get everything turned back on. And she did. She did. She complied with it right away. You can't, these are, these are things that say that you can't do that, okay? All right, if you have children, you have to fill out the FL-105, the UCCJEA. It's a Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction. I don't even remember what all it stands for. But basically, it wants to make sure that the court has jurisdiction over the children. So it's going to ask you for their name, their birth date, their birth location, city, and state, and then where they have lived for the last five years and who they have lived with. And sometimes that's tedious, especially if you've moved a lot, but if you've got a lot of kids, um, once you fill out the first one, you can just click a, a box that says, it's the same as the one as the first one, right? Like for the most part, it's gonna be the same. So you really only have to probably do that once, but it's gonna to wanna to know where the kids lived and where you live, like, and it, so it might not make sense, right? It wants to know where the kids lived, who they lived with, and the, and, and then, um, like, what city? It, 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 they want to know their address and your address, even though it's the same because you were living with your own children. But then I've seen courts reject it because it doesn't have the parents' address. Like, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So we don't worry about that. We'll just be like. That's what the court wants. We're gonna put an extra address in here even though it's identical. We could get it rejected or we could just put the address in there and, and keep on with our day. And you're gonna you're gonna fill that out. Um, if there's, sometimes people have had other cases involved. Maybe there was, sometimes there's, you know, CPS involved. You might need to mark that on the case. But for the most part, there's not usually anyone else involved. There's not usually any other cases involved. Really, the form is pretty straightforward, documenting where the kids have lived for the last five years, who they've lived with, what their addresses were, those types of things. Then, then, just to get a little extra, some counties have local forms. Yay! 
Los Angeles has a local forum and it really wants to make sure it has jurisdiction. It ha that you are filing in the right location because Los Angeles is so big and there are so many courts and then a lot of their courts do also cover family law. So one of, it wants to make sure that you are filing in the correct court. That's usually the function of a local form is to make sure you're filing in the right location. The other function, uh, I see it like in San Francisco and a few other counties, they want to make sure you know, hey, there's something called ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution. You don't have to go before a judge. There are other ways to settle your divorce. Here are some things to consider. For our area, it's usually about, did you pick the right court? Okay, good. So that's your local form. That's it. These are your forms. It's nothing really to get overwhelmed with. If you're feeling overwhelmed though, because this is not what you do every day, you can usually fill out a simple intake form with someone like me or with me. I would like that. Where I, we gather basic information about you and then your basic simple questions and then you give us your answers and then we'll help you with your divorce forms. We'll get that filled out. You'll review it. You'll make sure it's okay. If you want anything changed, we'll change it. We'll send it to you for review again. We don't send anything to court or force you to sign anything until you're happy with it. We never force you to sign anything. Once you're happy with it, once you tell us you approve of the changes, then we send it to you for your signature. Then we get it filed for you. Those, all of those papers and some, a few more, then they get served to your spouse. And we can talk about that another time, but please don't get overwhelmed with step one. Step one should not take you very long to fill out at all. It should go relatively quickly. This actually is the fastest portion of filling out your divorce forms. If you've got questions, if you need help with these forms, please reach out, go ahead and put a comment below or schedule a call with me. I'll see you soon.